Welcome to the first day of the St. Louis Regional Freightways Freight Week FTL 2023. I'm Mary Lamy, Executive Vice President of Multimodal Enterprises for Bi-State Development, which includes the St. Louis Regional Freightway as one of its enterprises. We're kicking off Freight Week STL with Innovation Day, during which we're featuring some of the emerging technologies that have tremendous potential to impact the movement of freight in the years to come. Earlier this morning, we had an update on the advancements from the St. Louis-based Intramotive is making in the development of autonomous rail cars and learned about an Israeli company's efforts related to the digitalization of global waterways. In our third session of the day, you'll learn about a St. Louis-based company's partnership with the Port of Long Beach and the role they are playing in helping to create a supply chain information highway. The innovative solution they are creating provides the abilities to access, analyze, and integrate data regarding the movement of freight through the nation's largest ports in a way that helps improve in-transit visibility. Before we dive into our topic, we'd like to thank our sponsors. We appreciate all the sponsorship support that makes it possible for us to deliver Freight Week STL. This year's presenting sponsors include the Boeing Center at Washington University, Steadfast City St. Louis, University of Missouri St. Louis, Millstone Weber, and Amron. Our supporting sponsors are the Jerry Costello Group and the Hauser Group. Associate sponsors for this year include Southern Illinois Builders Association, Terracon, Alberici, Castle Contracting, HNTB, CDI, and Brinkman Constructors. I'll be moderating today's session and our panelists include Jason Carter, founder and chief executive officer of St. Louis-based Uncommon, Noel Hasigaba, deputy executive director of administration and operations with the Port of Long Beach. Welcome gentlemen, and we'll start with some introductions. Jason, let's begin with you. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and Uncommon and the contract that you have with the Port of Long Beach that is supporting the creation of the supply chain information highway. Sure, thanks, Mary. I am Jason Carter. I'm the founder and CEO of Uncommon. We are a St. Louis-based, 12-year-old, 200-plus engineers, analysts, architect, architects, hackers, and geeks, technical consultancy, focused on solving wicked, complex pro business problems that have technology application solutions. We are headquartered right outside Scott Air Force Base, 20 miles east of St. Louis. I am a retired Navy commander, and I spent my last three years at Scott Air Force Base, which is the home of United States Transportation Command, responsible for global transportation and logistics for the entire Department of Defense. And that's where Uncommon's engineers cut their teeth, working on those complex global logistics problems. In the course of time, we became an Amazon Web Services advanced tier partner. And about two years ago, Amazon, through its relationship with the Port of Long Beach, was looking for an integration partner to work on this problem set that was highlighted during the global pandemic of supply chain disruption. And they reached out to us. We got in contact with the Port of Long Beach. We went through a competitive bid process and we're selected in the fall of 2021 to work on this initiative that's exciting not only for us, but I think for the nation as well. Thank you, Jason. Okay, Noel, please introduce yourself and your role with the Port of Long Beach and share any interesting statistics about your port. Well, hello, Mary. First of all, let me say it's a pleasure to join you and Jason on this panel. Uh, happy Freight Week to all of your uh, audience members. Uh, Noel Hasegaba, Deputy Executive Director at the Port of Long Beach. I function as the uh, Chief Operating Officer and oversee the day-to-day -day administrative and operating functions of the port. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the Port of Long Beach, uh, we currently stand as the nation's second busiest seaport, and we are located right next to the Port of Los Angeles. And together, the San Pedro Bay Ports Complex, as we all know, as we are known together, account for historically about 40% of the nation's goods. So virtually every container that crosses our docks on a given day uh, reaches all 435 congressional districts. So the, the cargo that moves through our port complex uh, truly is of national significance. And just to give you a, a sense of magnitude, 
Uh, just last year in Long Beach alone, we moved over 9.1 million TEU and together with the Port of Los Angeles, nearly 20 million TEU. So that's a massive amount of cargo that crosses our docks on any given day, which is destined to all the major markets across the nation. And this is why uh, innovation and the having solutions to address the glaring um, issue of lack of visibility is so important. And so we are very pleased to partner with Uncommon to develop the supply chain information highway uh, to address one of the ongoing and, and pressing issues facing the supply chain. Noel, what are your thoughts about this forward thinking initiative and the benefits that will deliver? I think it's desperately needed. It's long overdue, Mary. Uh, over the years, our port has grown in volumes. Each year, we move more and more containers, and that volume exacerbates the complexity that's associated with moving cargo. If you think about it, a container that arrives at our port, arrives on a ship, and makes its way out of our terminal, either on a train or a truck, but when you're moving 20 million container units uh, any given year, it, the lack of visibility and the inability to track and trace those containers with a high degree of certainty is very disruptive to the supply chain. So giving this tool and, and giving the ability to uh, our shippers to be able to track and trace these containers along the supply chain is a massive, massive um, value prop that we're currently working on. And, and again, I think this innovative solution that we're designing and developing in partnership with Uncommon is not just gonna be good for the Port of Long Beach, it's gonna be a game changer for our industry here in the United States and, and possibly even the world. Thank you, Noel. So Jason, what's the status of this project? Yeah, Mary, so in the fall of 2021, we were commissioned by the Port of Long Beach to build a prototype and we delivered that in early 22 in time for the Global Container Conference where it gained a lot of visibility and interest. And so the prototype was designed to show the art of the possible. So we went to phase two, and in phase two, it goes from prototype to operations. And in that case, what you need is real data. And this is where the complexity of the problem set comes in, because you need to get data from multiple stakeholders into one place for those stakeholders with the need to know the information to have visibility into it. Well, not a lot of people want to send their data off to potential visibility by their competitors. And so we've been focused on the data sharing agreements necessary to build trust in the supply chain information highway. That's where our background comes in. As a former DOD contractor, security is, is at the forefront of everything we do. We're protecting not simply against competitor proprietary information, but from sophisticated attacks from nation states. And so we've been able to, over the last year, broker many of those data agreements. And so we're, we're getting data from ocean carriers. We're getting data from the Port of Long Beach's terminals. And now we are working with the beneficial cargo owners, the BCOs, who really are the primary customers of the supply chain information highway. We're working with 10 of the nation's most recognizable consumer brands right now to make sure their requirements are being realized in the supply chain information highway. So previously and historically, EDI transactions are focused on passing the necessary information to the next leg of the supply chain. Now we're focused on bringing global visibility. And so the BCOs are giving us the requirements and you can see, I think in the graphic that's being displayed, um, the container ledger we're building so that instead of going from stakeholder to stakeholder to get your information, you're going to a single place to gain enterprise visibility. Thank you, Jason. So Noel, you kind of hinted to this a little bit in your previous response, um, but you played a key role in discussions um, that we hosted here in the St. Louis area last December with various other port directors. What can you tell us about how those discussions went and why you're taking a leadership role on this important initiative? 
Well, let me uh, take up the last part of your question first. Why are we taking a leadership role? And really what's driving this, uh, Mary, is, is the need, this glaring gap of visibility across the supply chain that was magnified uh, through the pandemic and induced supply chain crisis. And our customers uh, have been uh, waiting for years for a solution uh, that will enable them to have that true end-to-end -end visibility. So when we designed the concept that uh, with Uncommon's help became a prototype and is now in the process of being scaled up across our terminals and built into a full-on solution, uh, we listen very closely to our customers. And, and I think that's, that's important for your audience to understand we didn't develop this in a vacuum. Uh, between Jason and myself, we have decades of logistics supply chain experience, but we're not the shippers. And so it was important for us to develop something that was actually going to add value and become a true solution, right? We've all heard the, you know, we've all heard uh, from different vendors over the years offering solutions. In my view, technology in and of itself is not a solution, it's a tool but it becomes a solution when it's properly designed and integrated into an operation. And that's what we've been working on. So what we realized early on, Mary, is that the only way the supply chain information highway is going to become a true solution that enables antenna -end visibility is if we have coast-to-coast -coast connectivity. So we realized early on that this has to be a national initiative. And so what we did in December is we brought together uh, the leadership of all of our partner ports to date, which includes the Port of Oakland, the Northwest Seaport Alliance, the Utah Inland Port Authority, South Carolina Ports Authority, Port Miami, the Port of New York, New Jersey, Port Wainini. And we had a two-day session there in your office, Mary, and we appreciate your hospitality uh, along with Uncommon. And we had just a, a, a very productive, very fruitful discussion. There's alignment on the vision, there's alignment on our, our process, and we're just excited to be able to partner with ports across the country who share our value and share our vision for making this solution a national solution. Now I'd say this, we walked away uh, feeling reinvigorated about where we are and where we're headed, but we're also, we're also uh, building this out uh, in coordination with our federal partners who are developing their own initiatives, whether it's the Department of the Transportation with through their flow initiative or through the FMC and Commissioner Bensel's Maritime Transportation Data Initiative. So we're taking a very comprehensive, very holistic approach because that's the only way we're gonna tru truly uh, impact the supply chain in a positive way. Noel, that's a great response. Jason, what can we expect to see in terms of next steps for this initiative? Yeah, thanks, Mary. As Noel and I have both pointed out, you know, to this point in time, we've been focused on the beneficial cargo owners. And when this project started, again, we were in the midst of the global pandemic and there were ships stacked up in harbors and the supply chain had sort of ground to a halt. And, you know, there's been significant improvements in that time, but none of us want to wait to have another problem happen before we fix the sort of fundamental elements of the supply chain that led to that, resiliency of the supply chain. And so now we're focused on interoperability, sustainability, and especially velocity to improve the flow of goods through first the Port of Long Beach and then others by providing data visibility. To this day, as we talk to the BCOs, they still claim that visibility is the number one problem preventing them from achieving optimum supply chain efficiency. And so in the next phases, we are looking to extend this beyond our initial group of 10 BCOs that I already mentioned. We'll be doing that over the next several months. And then as we move into the fall, extending this to other stakeholders, including trucking companies, 3PLs, the railroads, and other stakeholders who also need visibility of goods flowing through the supply chain. As Noel mentioned, I think they have 20,000 BCOs in the Port of Long Beach alone, 20,000 customers. Nationwide, that's uh, like 200,000. And so the, the biggest players in this supply chain have visibility 
But when their trucks are in line at the ports, the congestion is contributed by all of those 200,000 customers. And so improving that enterprise visibility and extending this to other stakeholders and to other ports is what we're focused on in the next 12 months. Thank you, Jason. Noel, you've been generous with your time today, and we appreciate all of your leadership taking the lead with this program. Is there anything else you'd like to add for our audience today? The only other thing I would say is, you know, when we look at what we as a Port Authority do, our focus is squarely on the shipper experience. As Jason said, the only way we're going to be able to deliver reliability, velocity, is by enabling our partners and our customers to be able to move their cargo with that velocity. Visibility will get them there. And the supply chain information highway, in our view, is that solution that will enable that end-to-end -end visibility. And working with our port partners, and working with our industry partners, this is going to become a national solution that will be a true game changer. And again, Mary, I want to thank you and Jason for having me uh, online. And hopefully in the not too distant future, we can be back to give you an update on the progress we're achieving. That's fantastic. Thank you, Noel. Jason, our office has had a long working relationship with your office. We're really excited you're working on this project. Any closing comments you'd like to share? Thanks, Mary. I guess the first thing I'd like to say is a big thank you to Noel and the Port of Long Beach for their leadership on this. This is a really exciting project for us and is the culmination of 12 years of technology history in the transportation industry and is one of the most impactful projects we've worked on in our lifetime. And I would just point out, you know, when we started this project, we were calling it the data visibility tool. And Noel and his team came up with the moniker, the Supply Chain Information Highway. And I thought that was really insightful because a highway is simply infrastructure and, and by itself doesn't provide value. It is value that transits along that infrastructure that is the really important element for the nation. And so as we continue to build out the supply chain information highway, usage is what brings value. So if you're out there and you're representing a beneficial cargo owner, a shipper today, there's a QR code here and a link at the bottom of the page to click on to put your information in. I've also put the email address of Josh Leesman, our product owner for this. We want your participation. We want your voice in this so that this doesn't become simply a project but infrastructure that's useful for the nation. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. Noel, continue to love working with the Port of Long Beach. Mary, thank you very much for providing both of us the opportunity to talk today and look forward to having a great freight week. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Noel. Today's discussion has been great. I must compliment both of you and your organizations for your leadership on this program and the work that you're doing to improve freight flow through our nation's ports and deliver value for the beneficial cargo owners. I think the biggest takeaway is that the solution you're fine tuning through this partnership with the Port of Long Beach is truly scalable, and that makes it a game changer for the industry. Thank you for joining us today to provide this overview. Best of luck as you continue to work on your supply chain information highway. I'd also like to give a final thank you to our sponsors for Freight Week STL 2023, their support makes it possible for us to continue to deliver the great content that is the hallmark of this annual conference. Freight Week continues tomorrow with a panel discussion featuring St. Louis Regional Ports Investing for the Future, during which we'll discuss recent infrastructure funding wins that are strengthening port operations across the bi-state area and supporting future growth. We hope you can join us and encourage you to share links to any of our Freight Week content with others who may be interested.